हेलो फ्रेंड्स टॉपिक फॉर टूडेज प्रेजेंटेशन इज लिक्विड लिक्विड एक्सट्रेक्शन दिस प्रेजेंटेशन इज अ पार्ट ऑफ एन एनिमी आई सी टी प्रोजेक्ट स्पॉन्सर्ड बाय एम एच आर डी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया वॉट इज लिक्विड लिक्विड एक्सट्रेक्शन द सेपरेशन ऑफ अ कंपोनेंट from a liquid mixture by treatment with a solvent in which the desired component is preferentially soluble is known as liquid liquid extraction the specific requirement is that a high percentage extraction of product must be obtained but concentrated in a smaller volume of solvent prior to starting a large scale extraction at small scale the solubility characteristic of the product should be checked using a wide range of solvents so screening is necessary before starting large scale extraction program a simple rule to remember is that like dissolves like the important likeness as far as solubility relations are concerned is in the polarities of molecules polar liquids mix with each other and dissolves salt and other polar solids the solvents for non polar compounds are liquids of low or nil polarity so before establishment of such type of extraction process polarity is necessary the dielectric constant is a measure of the degree of molar polarization of a compound if this value is known it is then possible to predict whether a compound will be polar or non polar with a high value indicating a highly polar compound so on the basis of dielectric constant we can judge the process the dielectric constant d of a substance can be measured by determining the electrostatic capacity c of a condenser containing the substance between the plates if c0 is the value for the same condenser when completely evacuated then d is equal to c upon c0 experimentally dielectric constants are obtained by comparing the capacity of the condenser when filled with a given liquid with the capacity of the same condenser containing a standard liquid whose dielectric constant is known very accurately if d1 and d2 are the dielectric constants of the experimental and standard liquids and c1 and c2 are the electrostatic capacities of a condenser when filled with each of the liquids then d1 upon d2 is equal to c1 upon c2 the value of d1 can be calculated since c1 and c2 can be measured and d2 is known the dielectric constant for a number of solvents are already known the final choice of solvent will be influenced by the distribution of partition coefficient k where k is equal to concentration of solute in extract upon concentration of solute in refinate the value of k defines the ease of extraction this is the table in which dielectric constants of solvents are given at 25 degree centigrade according to this table we can show that hexane hexane is having less dielectric constant and because of that it is least polar while water having higher dielectric constant that is 78.5 and because of that it is most polar solvent when there is a relatively high k value good stability of product and good separation of the aqueous and solvent phases then it may be possible to use a single stage extraction system and here figure is given that is of single stage extraction unit a value of 50 indicates that the extraction should be straight forward whereas a value of 0.1 shows that the extraction will be difficult and that a multi stage process will be necessary unfortunately in number of system the value of k is low and co current or counter current multi stage systems have to be utilized now what is the case of co current flow extraction system there are n number of mixture or separator vessels in line and the refinet goes from vessel 1 to vessel n 
fresh solvent is added to each stage the feed and extracting solvent pass through the cascade in the same direction so here raffinate and solvent both will move in same direction so name is co-current extract is recovered from each stage although a relatively large amount of solvent is used a high degree of extraction is achieved this is the diagram of co-current flow extraction system second is counter current flow extraction system there are a number of mixture or separators connected in series as like co current extraction system the extracted raffinate passes from vessel 1 to vessel n while the product enriched solvent is flowing from vessel n to vessel 1 so the feed and extracting solvent pass through the cascade in opposite directions and because of that name given is counter current the most efficient system for solvent utilization is counter current operation showing a considerable advantage over batch and co current systems this is the diagram of counter current flow extraction system unless there are special reasons the counter current system should be used in practice the series of counter current extractions are conducted in a single continuous extractor using centrifugal forces to separate the two liquid phases the two liquid streams are forced to flow counter current to each other through a long spiral of channels within the rotor one of the such type of extractor is port bl neck counter current extractor and this is the diagram of the same it consists of a horizontal cylindrical drum revolving at up to 5000 rpm about a shaft passing through its axis the liquids to be run counter current are introduced into the shaft with the heavy liquid entering the drum at the shaft while the light liquid is led by an internal route to the periphery of the drum. As the drum rotates, the heavy liquid is forced to the periphery of the drum by centrifugal action where it contacts the light liquid. The solute is transferred between the liquids and the light liquid is displaced back toward the axis of the drum. The heavy liquid is returned to the drum's axis via internal channels. The two liquid streams are then discharged via the staff. Flow rates in excess of 1 lakh decimal, uh, decimal cube per hour are possible in the largest models. Probably the most useful property of this type of extractor is the low holdup volume of liquid in the machine compared with the throughput. Penicillin G is an antibiotic which is recovered from fermentation broths by centrifugal counter current solvent extraction. At neutral pH in water, penicillin is there in its anionic form and this is the structure of 6 amino penicillinic acid that is basic structure of penicillin. In acid conditions this ionization is suppressed and the penicillin is more soluble in organic solvents. At pH 2 to 3 the distribution ratio of total acid will be K is equal to penicillin in organic solvent, solvent divided by penicillin in aqueous form as well as anionic form of penicillin in aqueous form. For penicillin, this value may be as high as 40 in a suitable solvent. The penicillin extraction process may involve four following stages. First, extraction of the penicillin G from the filtered broth into an organic solvent where amyl or butyl acetate or methyl isobutyl ketone is used as an organic solvent. Second, extraction from the organic solvent into aqueous buffer. Third, extraction from aqueous buffer into organic solvent. And fourth, extraction of the solvent to obtain the penicillin salt. At each extraction stage, progressively smaller volume of extractant are used to achieve concentration of the penicillin. Unfortunately, penicillin G has a half-life of 15 minutes at pH 2 at 20 degree centigrade. The harvested broth is therefore initially cooled to 0 degree centigrade to 3 degree centigrade. The cooled broth is then acidified to pH 2 to 3 with sulfuric or phosphoric acid immediately before extraction. 
This acidified broth is quickly passed through centrifugal countercurrent extractor using about 20% by volume of the solvent in the counter flow. Ideally, the hold up time should be about 60 to 90 seconds. The penicillin rich solvent then passes through second extractor countercurrent to an aqueous NaOH or KOH solution so that the penicillin is removed to the aqueous phase as the salt. And this is the equation how penicillin salt get formed. These two stages may be sufficient to concentrate the penicillin adequately from a broth with a high titer. Penicillin will crystallize out of aqueous solution. At each stage, the spent liquid should be checked for residual penicillin and solvent uses carefully monitored. Since the solvents are expensive and their disposal is environmentally sensitive, they are recovered for recirculation through the extraction process. The success of a process may depend on efficient solvent recovery and reuse. Second is two-phase aqueous extraction. Liquid-liquid extraction is a well-established technology in chemical processing and in certain sectors of biochemical processing which we have discussed in detail. However, the use of organic solvents has limited application in the processing of sensitive biologicals. Aqueous two-phase systems, on the other hand, have a high water content and low interfacial surface tension and are regarded as being biocompatible. Two phase aqueous systems have been known since the late 19th century and a large variety of natural and synthetic hydrophilic polymers are used today to create two aqueous phases. Phase separation occurs when hydrophilic polymers are added to an aqueous solution and when the concentrations exceed a certain value, two immiscible aqueous phases are formed. Settling time for the two phases can be prolonged depending on the components used and vessel geometry. There are many systems nowadays used for the purpose. First, non-ionic polymer, non-ionic polymer water system that is polyethylene glycol and dextrin. Second, polyelectrolyte non-ionic polymer water system that is sodium carboxymethyl cellulose and polyethylene glycol. Third, polyelectrolyte, polyelectrolyte water system that is sodium dextran sulfate or sodium carboxymethyl cellulose. And fourth, polymer low molecular weight components water system, example is dextran propyl alcohol. Last stage is solvent recovery. Solvent recovery plant is a major component in any extraction process. It is usually a distillation unit. There are three stages of distillation. The removal of solvent as a vapor from a solution that is evaporation. Second, separation of the lower boiling more volatile components from other less volatile components by vapor liquid separation in column. And third, recovery of the more volatile solvent fraction by condensation of the vapor. For evaporation, wide range of evaporators are available which can operate either batchwise or continuously. In batch distillation, the vapor from the boiler passes up, up the column and is condensed. Part of the condensate will be returned as the reflux for counter current contact with the rising vapor in the column. The distillation is continued until a satisfactory recovery of the lower boiling more volatile components has been accomplished. This is the diagram of batch distillation plant. Beginning of a continuous distillation is similar with batch distillation but condensate is not withdrawn initially. It will run continuously. There is total reflux of the condensate until ideal operating conditions are being established throughout the column. At this stage, the liquid feed is fed into the column at an intermediate level. The more volatile compounds move upwards as vapor and are condensed followed by partial reflux of the condensate. Meanwhile, the low, less volatile fractions move down the column to the evaporator at this stage, part of the bottom's fraction is continuously withdrawn and part is reboiled and returned to the column. Countercurrent contacting of the vapor and liquid stream is achieved by causing vapor to be dispersed in the liquid phase. 
and liquid to be dispersed in continuous vapor phase that is packed column. The plate or tray columns consist of a number of distinct chambers separated by perforated plates or trays. The rising vapor bubbles through the liquid which is flowing across each plate and is dispersed into liquid from perforations or bubble caps. The liquid flows across the plates and reaches the reboiler by a series of overflow wires and downpipes. A packed tower is filled with a randomly packed material such as rings, saddles, helices, spheres or beads. The heat input to a distillation column can be considerable. The simplest way of conserving heat are to preheat the initial feed by a heat exchanger using heat from hot vapors at the top of the column, heat from the bottom's fraction when it is being removed in a continuous process or otherwise combination of both processes. This is the diagram of continuous distillation plant. Thank you.